Hi everybody, thanks for being here. I'm Nate Eaton and in our studio today we have a local hometown kid, adult, <laughs> man. <laughs> Ryan Hamilton is here and uh, some exciting news. You're bringing your show to the Mountain America Center. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're very excited. This is my second ever arena show. Uh, so we did the Delta Center in Salt Lake City last year around Thanksgiving, so we decided to bring it up here. And uh, I was just excited to see that this new venue exists. Right. And uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. We, I think so many of us are excited to have a nice venue yeah. to watch hockey and shows and to see you on November 30th. Yeah. Uh, tickets are on sale now. You can go check out Ryan's show. Now, a lot of people know you from the Netflix special from a few years ago. Yeah. Happy Face. Right. I've always wondered, did you come up with that title? Did the marketers, how did that work? I came up with it. I mean, it's based on the, the joke uh, at the beginning of the special where I say, I look like this, but I don't feel like this. I, I look really happy all the time, but you know, I can't look in the mirror and go, I don't really feel like this. I can't show up at a funeral, you know, that. Right. So it was a, it was a little bit uh, subversive, I guess. Right. But I came up with it. I liked the title, yeah. Did you ever think working Spud Harvest in Ashton, uh -huh. writing for the Fremont County newspaper, <laughs> that you would be living in New York City performing for, the, for people from all over the world? No, I could never have predicted that. I loved comedy. I never thought of it as a career. For whatever reason, I was just really drawn to it from a very young age. I, my parents knew about it. They would wake me up if there was a comedian on The Tonight Show that I thought I would like and pull me out of bed so I could watch. I was just really fascinated by it, thinking about it. Um, I didn't think of it as a career. I mean, it was not on my radar as a career. I didn't know how people went from just a person doing life to getting on television as a comedian. It didn't, I, there wasn't that reference for me. Right. So, so how did you? I mean, you, how did you take those steps? I, you know, I went all the way through college not thinking, I would do it on the side occasionally for fun. But um, I graduated in public relations. I got a job at an ad agency in Salt Lake City and I was working and I thought this would be my life. I was doing comedy for fun. I lost my job and I was looking for another job and I started to think about comedy as an option to try at that time because I didn't have a lot of obligations. I was out of college. I thought I can always go back to this career if I want. And so I just, I just started finding these little one-nighter gigs all over the place. Around Provo? Uh, around all of the West, oh, really. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would go up into Montana, Washington, Southern Utah, Idaho. These little one-nighter gigs existed, mm -hmm. and uh, they were not great gigs, but I could do them. And there was a comedy club in Salt Lake City, Wise Guys, that I was starting to go up at a lot. And I just... Kind, and I thought, let's take a year and see what happens, and then I'll reevaluate. And then I would, a few things would happen. And then I thought, let's take another year, and a few things would happen. And I just approached it like that. But this was before uh, social media. Mm. So that's how it worked, really. You just had to get on stage and uh, try to get the attention of a network or something somehow. There were these comedy festivals that mm. I used for that. But that's how it started, yeah. It's gotta be so competitive. Because a lot of people think they're funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then a lot of people like genuinely are funny. Yeah. So when would you say you got your first like big break? It's hard to know exactly. I mean, I, in, I moved to Seattle to, for a year, right in the beginning when I decided I really want to try this because I needed a place I could get on stage every night. I had a few connections there. I didn't feel I was ready for New York or LA. And there was a comedy competition called the Seattle International Comedy Competition. And they had one night where they had industry from LA come and be judges. They were uh, agents and managers and casting executives from networks. And I won that night when they were the judges. I did not win the entire competition, but that night I won. Mm. And I got a manager and I started getting some auditions in LA just because I, that was my first exposure to them. Uh, a lot of those things didn't go that direction, but it was my first foray into the kind of the wider business. Right. Yeah. And once you have that in, I'm sure that it, things just, people know people and it just spreads. Yeah. I mean, it's not immediate, uh, you know, but it's, it's, uh, 
it was, a, it was a milestone for me where I thought, okay, I've been recognized by some people who know a lot, and that gave me confidence to keep going. Mm. You know. Is that when like the Tonight Show calls or Conan um, calls? I, it took a while for those things to happen. I, I, I was in some competitions that I won. I got on Comedy Central's radar through a competition mm. that I submitted a VHS tape. I was living in Salt Lake City. I submitted a tape. They liked it. I got on their radar that way. I didn't, I didn't advance in the competition, but I got on their radar. Then they had uh, this show for new comedians. They had a cancellation. They needed somebody quickly. Oh, wow. And they thought of me. Wow. And so that was the first time I ever did TV was on uh, this show called Live at Gotham on Comedy Central. It was for new comedians showcasing short sets. Hmm. And that was the first time I performed on the East Coast, really. Um, and then that, I met some people um, in New York. And I thought, maybe I'll move to New York. And once I moved to New York, I started to meet more people. You know, it all builds. Right. It's, people think that there's, when was your big break? And it's multiple, multiple times. I yeah. mean, you know, the Netflix special, I was already a working comedian at that point, but it took me into a little bit bigger venues, so that was also a bigger break. So it's hard to know. It's, a, it's, it's you know, we often hear the thing about it's never an overnight success, but I think that's true. Yeah, so you know? when you, do you remember the, the time, the day when you found out you were going to have a Netflix special. Was it like shot for Netflix or did, did they shoot it and then they shopped it around? How, how did yeah, I, my uh, situation was kind of unique. We had been, we'd approached them and they hadn't been too interested. And then we started looking some other places and we found another uh, network that might have been interested, another avenue. We were thinking about it. And then Netflix called out of the blue and they said, we have this thing, opportunity for you, but it needs to be done in six weeks and we need to know right now. And uh, they said, yes or no, this is the deal. Six weeks is an extremely compact time frame to put something like that together. Very, I mean, that takes six months usually of planning wow. to secure a venue, find a director, find Film a production crew, company. Yeah. It sell the tickets. Right. You know, I had the material, but I had to put the set together. So because we wanted it on Netflix, we said okay, and and uh, we scrambled and we threw that together. I mean, it was it was quite an undertaking to get that from that day to turned in, edited six weeks later, complete. Wow. It was really quite stressful. <laughs> but, it, but it's Netflix. <laughs> it, it so was you're Netflix. like, we yeah, got to do it, yeah, right? Yeah, and Netflix, especially at that time, they were really making a big leap into comedy. Yeah. They had a lot of big, they were moving people's careers. And so, and it did, it did, it helped me. So, but yeah, that was very stressful. And, uh, you know, we couldn't fill the venue that we were in. Oh, no. So you can't really tell, but that venue's not, not full and uh they shoot it nice and tight yeah, right? yeah exactly so there was a lot of things that went into it that were that were um that were not really the standard way but that's how it happened for do me do you foresee another one yeah i mean we're going to get one out one way or another i i'm ready i have the material so right now we're looking at places to go if nothing else we'll release it which is pretty common now to put it out on our Just own do platform it yourself. yeah right. mm -hmm. when you are walking down the streets of new york yeah and trying to hail a cab or get in the subway or whatever i mean how often does your mind flash back to ashton idaho you still have family here so yeah. you're back a bit i, I mean come back. it's completely different worlds yeah <laughs> it is different worlds you know i think about it all the time and it's interesting, but I, I come from a very rural place. I now live in a very urban place. I get anxious there because I miss the nature and the quiet sometimes, yeah. but I also love it. But I see these weird parallels that is interesting to me. You know, where we're from, it's, it's hard in a lot of ways. There's, you know, you kind of live or die with the weather and the seasons and the crop yields and things like that. And the entire community kind of rallies around that. And it's not necessarily an easy life. And I moved to New York and I realized that extreme urban situation is also a hard life. You know, it can be very difficult. And so I think the people who live in these two kind of extremes, they live there for a reason and a purpose, but they also are taking on a lot of hardships in their life. So I kind of see these odd, weird parallels. I think about that a lot. Right. Um, but yeah, it's hard to 
understand my friends when I tell them. They don't, they can't understand where I'm from, yeah. you know. They just can't grasp it. I'm, you know, I, I, all I see are potato fields around me, and uh, that's where I grew up. But, you know, we weren't a farming family, but I worked on the farms. But, um, yeah, I think about it all the time. It's, it's still, the roots of me are, are here, but I live in this other place. You right. Know? Yeah. You wrote for the newspaper when yeah. you, as a teen. You worked at uh, mm -hmm. Channel 8 News when mm -hmm. you were uh, in college or high school? I, I started working there. I mean, you can drive. Can you still drive here when you're 14? I think so. And yeah. I think you can work spud harvest like when you're five or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I had my driver's license when I was 14, 15 years old. And I had this column in the newspaper around then. And I think maybe 15, 16 years old, the TV station called me and said, we hear you're interested in journalism. Can we train you up? And I said, okay. And I had a car. So Friday night, I would drive around and shoot high school sports. They'd give me an assignment. They just let me have a camera at the house. And um, I would do that every Friday night. And I did that all the way through high school, even a little bit into college. Are you still interested in news? Yeah, I like the news. I like... I like the energy around a newsroom. Right. I like what's going on in a newsroom. That's what kind of drew me to journalism. Is just it's every day is different and it's exciting and and uh, it's never boring. Yeah. And comedy's also like that because you're in front of a different audience every night. Every show's a little bit different, so I see some parallels. I hate to say that when I uh, first heard that you had been hit by a, a shuttle bus, yeah. that I immediately thought, he's going to work that into his show, <laughs> yeah. I, assuming you were okay and everything. Right. Has that been true? I mean, do you, do you yeah. use that? Is, yeah. And how I mean, are you doing, I should ask first. Oh, I'm doing much better, thank you. I, I you know, it, was, it really threw me for a while. I couldn't work for months and months, but um, I learned a lot. I've recovered very well. I have a steel plate in my arm. I had 10 broken ribs, a punctured mm -hmm. lung. But I'm um, very lucky. I had no head trauma, wow. nothing like that. You know, I was a pedestrian that got hit by a bus in the crosswalk with the light. I had the light. And so it was, uh, I was in Los Angeles. It was just kind of a fluke, crazy thing. And you never know what's going to happen in life. But I, um, I'm grateful that I'm healthy. And... I'm uh, able to work again, you know, so I would just wanted my life back, but I'm doing okay. And to answer your question, I, um, yeah, it's in my act. <laughs> I talk about, I have a lot of, I mean, it's, I could do nearly an entire show of uh, just of that. Right. I sometimes choose not to because it's a pretty heavy topic. Right. It can be for the audience, although they're laughing and it's very funny. Right. It can get uh, to feel like a lot. So, um, yeah, it's interesting, but that's where all my act, uh, act comes from. You never really, it's just whatever's going on in life, it seems to be, seeps into my act. You mentioned happy face, how you always, you know, aren't happy. You always <laughs> don't have a perma smile on your yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, there's, there's a song called Comedian out there about how the funniest kid in the class is really maybe the saddest inside, oh. or maybe the most introspective inside. I mean, comedians yeah. often are really deep thinkers, and, right. and there's another side to them. Have you, have you found that in your career as you've worked with other comedians, that they might be hilarious, you know, Robin Williams, or, or people yeah. like that, where they're, but there's, there's a lot more to, to the surface than Absolutely. the surface. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of comedians, it's hard to put everybody in, under one umbrella, but a lot of comedians, I think, and I feel myself this way, that yes, we're very funny, but I was more observant than I was uh, extroverted, mm. you know? And so I like to observe and I like to see what's going on and I would think of funny things and if I had an opportunity, I would say it, but it wasn't like I was in front of people all the time, you know? People I grew up with are often surprised that this is the career that I have now, yeah. you know, um, because I, I don't think it, w it you would have predicted it, uh, you know, knowing me as a young kid. Right. But I liked to be uh, observing and, and then and filter that and get it out somehow. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. How do you become friends with Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> How does that work? Well, it's not something I set out to do. Right. I will be it his was, friend. It was very uh, surreal, but... A friend of mine uh, named Gad El Malay, he, he is a very famous comedian in France. He moved over here to the States for a period of time to 
have a career in English, which was quite an interesting move and very difficult. He's doing comedy in a second language, uh, but he's a huge star in Europe. And he came over here and he knew who I was. He was a, he's a student of comedy, so he had studied a lot of American comedians. And he befriended me and we became very close friends. And he's friends with Jerry Seinfeld. And I was opening for Gad at Carnegie Hall mm. and Jerry was there and Gad introduced me. Wow. And uh, Jerry watched my set and as I came off stage, he was right there and he said very nice things. And uh, I get compared to him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we went in the green room after the show, and there was a lot of people there, a lot of you know, uh, you know, celebrities. And and uh, Jessica, Jerry's wife, goes, "You remind me so much of my husband." And I felt myself kind of like, "Oh, I never expected this moment ever." Right. I'm always trying to be myself, but yeah. I've always been compared to him. Mm. And I looked at Jerry and I said, yeah, I see this, I get this often. And I was kind of embarrassed. And he said, really? I don't see it. And everybody laughed. And it was just kind of a nice moment. And um, I ran into him on the street a couple of days later. Just I mean, randomly? Ran, I mean, I was at a comedy show. Oh, OK. But I, I had never run into him before. I'd been living in New York for years. I'd yeah. never run into him. Two days later. I was coming out of Gotham Comedy Club where I had my first television appearance and he was walking in hmm. and he pulled me aside. He said, hey, I just want to tell you, you know, we were talking about you at dinner and he said very nice things to me about, you know, my set. He was just very encouraging. And then he said, I got to get on stage, but nice to see you. And then a couple of days later, Gad called me and said, hey, we got an invite to go hang out with the Seinfelds at their place. They'd oh, my to. gosh. So I went over there and got to know them a bit. And uh, then Jerry asked me if I wanted to, you know, open for him, go on the road with him. So we became friends, and I still get to open for him. I just worked with him a couple weeks ago in New York, and uh, it's been surreal right. and odd. I happen to live just really close to him. I didn't know this, mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we get to see each other in the neighborhood and go to breakfast sometimes. And he's just become a very um, He's become a mentor, really, you know. Right. He's helped me learn how to balance my life with comedy. He's taught me a lot about comedy, but he's, he's really a student of all aspects of it, and, and I've learned a lot from him in that regard. That's so great to hear, because it could have gone the other way, not with him, but with anybody mm -hmm. where someone yeah. you've grown up watching or you really right. like, you meet them, and it's a disappointment. Right. But the <laughs> fact that he, like, took notice in you, complimented you multiple times, and then said, come out with me. Yeah. You should come to Idaho Falls with him. <laughs> you should do a show together. I, I, you know, I, that would be great. I would love that. He's traveling around a lot. I, I, I'll propose it, see what he thinks. He likes to work. He's always on the road. Right. One time, um, I don't know if you know who Colin Quinn is. He's a fantastic comedian. Colin Quinn, very well regarded in the community. He's been around for a long time. He and Jerry are very close friends for a long time. But... Um, once I was, I ran into Colin Quinn at, at the Comedy Cellar in New York, and Colin goes, come here, i got to show you something. He pulled up a picture of uh, mountains out of an airplane, but just to, like out of an airplane. He goes, Jerry sent me this, and Jerry must have been flying over Idaho or something. He goes, Jerry sent me this, and he, and, and he said, look what that says. It said, um, can you believe that Ryan started comedy from here? <laughs> <laughs> and that just blew my mind. When he showed me that picture, I, it really was a weird, interesting moment right. for me that like he knows, not only is he my friend, but he understands like my journey. Of right. coming. We all have a place and it's difficult to become a comedian and he had his own journey, but he thought about my journey and what it was to come from this kind of place right. to go to New York. Yeah. And so Would connect you to here yeah, and think yeah, to send it yeah, to a friend. Yeah, That's yeah, cool. Yeah, it was very interesting. But um, yeah. What do you, what's your ultimate dream? I mean, would you love like a late night show, doing it every night or traveling? What would be your dream? I, I love, I love live performing. I mean, um, I love to perform in a theater for people who know who I am. I get to do that now. I would like to continue to just grow that. I have ambitions to sell a TV show or something, do something scripted maybe in the streaming world, a limited series. Now I have some ideas and we're always working on that. So right before COVID, we were getting close to 
um, really pursuing that and had some interesting avenues and opportunities. And we're just starting those up again mm -hmm. now. So I really want to get another special out, and that's in the works very soon. And then I would like to pursue some scripted things. And, um, but that's, I love just being able to perform live and tour, and right. I think that's what I always wanted to do. So. And when you uh, say scripted for people watching, that's more like a, more like a series, right? Like yeah. you would be acting. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Something, you know, that we came up with that has a storyline. Um, I think it would be interesting to explore where I'm from in Idaho right. and, and being a comedian and coming from there. We've seen comedians a lot in New York City and places like that on television in those types of shows. I think I have a unique... Uh, kind of perspective of where I came from. So I would love to, I mean, that's kind of the idea that I would like to get something out there like that someday. We'll see. Who knows? Well, that would be, that would be fun to watch. Yeah. So you're here November 30th, Mountain America Center, the Hero Arena, mm -hmm. and tickets are on sale now. If you're watching, you can go get them. It's Thanksgiving weekend, so a lot of people will have family here gathered together. It'll be cold. You can go inside the arena <laughs> and feel warm, laugh a lot. What, I know it's several months out. I mean, have you started to prepare? Do you know some of the material, or is that in the works? I mean, I'm always adding. If you've seen me before, uh, there will definitely be new stuff. So, I mean, and hopefully a lot of it. I'm always constantly adding new material, so it's, it'll be the latest stuff I have, and uh, definitely will be stuff that you haven't seen before. So. And kids of all ages. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, you know, kids 10, 14, you know, 16, they seem to enjoy the show. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, little kids, I don't know if they're, I think they're welcome. It's kind of dependent on the venue rules where I go city right. to city, but... Um, Often I have three generations at my shows, and I, I think that's fun. Right. Yeah. But the material is appropriate. Oh, appropriate. Yeah. It's the, clean. The, yeah, it's, it's, it's a family-friendly show. Yeah, sorry. Yes. I, yeah. yeah, I'm always clean, so I wasn't even thinking in that yeah. regard. But yes, I mean, they may not, you know, if I'm talking about paying my taxes or whatever, they may not be interested. <laughs> but, but it will be appropriate. It'll be appropriate. Yeah. 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 Is, has there ever been pressure or thoughts from the industry to make you go, go a little risque? Yeah, I mean, I could do whatever I want. This is just something, it comes out of me this way. You right. know what I mean? It's just the way it, it works for me. And yeah, you choose a lane eventually, like where am I going to fit? And then I stay in there. But I, no, it hasn't been, I have never felt pressure to go any other way. In fact, I feel lucky that I can work in this lane because there's a lot of work available. <laughs> and it's just the comedians that I like and, and uh, that I've, always looked up to you know Jerry's one of those is like in that regard of of kind of observational broad I like working for a broad audience right you know and that's just how it comes out of me so right yeah well we're, we're excited for the show thank you so much yeah. for coming in and sharing a little bit about you you can get those tickets we'll put a link down below uh, you can go to the Mountain America website if you're watching on Facebook or somewhere else they're on there and follow Ryan Hamilton on his website and you said you're a little bit into social media. Not oh, yeah. Too. I mean, I, I'm, I'm on all this stuff. I, I, it's just difficult for me. To, but, right. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm mostly active on uh, Instagram probably more than the others. But right. what, you can find me everywhere. Yeah. All right. And yeah. we'll find you here. Okay. November 30th. <laughs> Thanks for watching.